kingdom are wizards. Wizards, being magical beings able to cast magic spells and sorceries of unknown origins, and even fewer still are thieves. And then combined, you have wizard thieves. Wizard thieves are able to dastardly steal things from the peasants and peons in the realm and do magical trickery as well. And after a long, hard day's work of thievery and hoarding, they all sit down at the tavern and they make a wager. The wizard thief, who is able to gather all of the treasures at the end of the night, will get to keep everything gathered by them throughout the day. You will be playing as one of these magical wizard thieves with your own unique deck of cards or abilities or potions, and you'll be flipping over cards from your deck trying to slap rapidly, scoring points from random different ways that you may achieve victory, as well as unique alternatives to play with a 5 and a 6 player expansion. Use your treasures wisely though, because if you mess up in any way, you might be in the doghouse, which means you will actually be cursed. You'll be flipping over your sad wizard thief hat, becoming the cursed wizard thief, and if you goof again, you're out of the game. I'll go ahead and show you down below what it looks like, what you get in the game, and how to play, and those of you familiar with Egyptian War will definitely understand wizard thieves with quite a few twists and turns along the way. Here is all of the components for the game Wizard Thieves, along with the advanced play and modules, which we will be talking about as well. As you can see, there's quite a few different cards in the game, and we'll go ahead and discuss most, if not all of them, as well as the basic way or understanding of how to play the game. These are the basic wizards for the game. Now, you got the yellow, you've got the green, the blue, and the red here. Each of them are going to have a standard deck of cards, and the way you determine what cards are theirs is by the border. If you look at the border of the hat and the border of the cards, they will match. Make sure you put them together. There is a module which will include a potion if you'd like to add that. It's a card that gives you special abilities that will let you become uncursed and do some other unique things throughout the game, but they are not actually going to start in your deck. They just come included if you want to use that advanced variant of the rules. There's also a fifth and sixth player, and both of them play differently. One of them is going to be the witch here, which is able to use their broom as well as a potion, and they have some unique little cards added as well. And then the other player, this is the mischievous one, they start with three potions. With these three potions, they can win any pot that they deem they want to win. But they don't start with any cards, so if you want to use this one, make sure that you're playing the advanced mode and that you understand the game before you jump into it. However, this can be a very interesting one as well. Those are the five different decks and player types, but now we can talk about magical cards. The bombs, portals, the stealing an item, and mimic cards along with the king card. These are going to be shuffled up, these are the basic eight, and dealt out with two for two to each player. Then, if you want, you can include these as well, and include the mimics, and you can utilize them in the game as well by still dealing out the same number of, of cards to players. This is a portal card. Certain cards will tell you to place cards on the portal, and that will be an extra grab action that you can utilize, and I'll explain how that all works. The final thing you need to know about is, of course, this is the player reference card with a front and back to explain how all of the different items work and how you can utilize them depending on your class and what you play. And, of course, the rule books, which are very easy to read and not... Not very long, so pretty quick to understand the game. Now let's talk about how to play the game. We'll set these aside and we'll just discuss them after in the review portion. We'll also go ahead and move these and the mimics aside as well. Putting the portal over here, we'll take these extra ones here. We'll go ahead and go ahead and shuffle these up. And then we'll deal out two to each player. After you've done that, make sure you have a potion set aside for each player if you want to play that module, and if not, set it aside, which of course we'll talk about when we come up. And then we'll put these cards into the deck for each player, and then we'll shuffle each player's deck. Let's see if I don't lose the hats here, huh? And after you've done that, you are ready to go in the game. So, let me see here. This one here, this one here, we got all the colors, and finally we've got green over here as well. No curse for you just yet. So, 
Now we've got our decks of cards. I want to go ahead and go ahead and shuffle them good. And if you've ever played the game War or Egyptian War, you'll kind of have an idea of how Wizard Thieves works. Because what you're trying to do is flip cards over and you're trying to score the entire deck of cards. If you run out of cards, you're going to be out, but not forgotten because you can still get back in. But the way to win is be the only person left with cards at the end of the game. The first player will just go ahead and choose red over here. We'll simply start by flipping over a card as quickly as they can and putting it down on the field. The next player is then going to get a chance to go and flip over a card as well, and play will proceed just like this, until something like this pops up, a treasure. And the treasures have a different number on them, whether it be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or maybe even 5. And when the number pops up, the next player in line are going to flip over that number of cards from their deck. 1, 2, and potentially 3. But... If you run into a couple interesting things, then you can actually slap or it will change to the next player. Now, let's go ahead and stop and just say that he played this one from the top of his deck. In this game, if sandwiched cards are the same, sandwich cards being these two cards, so a sandwich, you got the two buns and the meat here. If they're the same, any player can smack down there and take those cards and then those cards are now in his or her hand. Another way that works is if both cards were on top of each other in which case you could also slap and take those cards, along with every other card in the pile. Another way you can beat the challenge by playing these three cards here is simply playing another one of these treasure type cards, in which case it will pass to the next player. So if nobody saw that slap or they just simply let it go, then this card will flip and now it's the next player. They only have one chance to flip, so they'll flip over one. No sandwich, no double. Then this player here will win the challenge and all these cards will go to this player here and the game will simply continue more cards will start getting flipped out and players will keep going up to the point where they find doubles or another another one of those will happen one two portal and then you go ahead and check the rules for whatever the portal item says and actually you can go ahead and look at this thing here portal says basically what happens is one of the players is going to have to take a card from the top of their deck and place it on the portal, which is going to be another grab action, which means that if there is another type, another uh, gem of that type on top here, then a slap can occur, in which case you can take all the cards in the pile. And continue, another portal, there's a slap for a double, this player is gonna go ahead and take it. And that's how the game basically works. It's fairly simple. You're eventually going to have one player that just gets all of the cards. And when that happens, they, they are the wizard thief champion. Now, like I said, there are potions, which will let you come back from basically being cursed and the way you get cursed is you simply try and slap when you shouldn't be slapping and you slap more than once in, in a row without turning yourself back over not only are you curse but then you will actually become eliminated as well and certain characters will have more than others another couple cards i didn't talk about was the mimic here a mimic will replicate any gem that it's landing on top of so in this case that would be a duplicate and you can slap as well there are bombs that can mess with the player's piles there are kings that will only work in a challenge but guarantees to win them and there is at least one more that's like a steal card it will basically let you take cards and remove them or steal them from an opponent and that's basically the idea of the game a lot of different little implemented actions that have been added throughout the game but i think if you understand how war works or even more so egyptian war you'll understand wizard thieves and all of the extra things that are included in this game let's come up and discuss what i think about the game as a kid i loved egyptian war and egyptian war functioned the same as this game but with a couple differences a you're using a deck of playing cards and you'll be using jacks queens kings and aces as your challenge cards so aces are four uh the kings are three or uh, it's four Kings are three, queens are two, jacks are one, and basically having those in your deck is going to be the best thing possible for you. The one caveat to that game specifically is if you have a lot of jacks, it's very unlikely you're going to lose unless you get hit with doubles. Somebody can jump in with a sandwich rule, which plays like I was explaining down here below. This game presents a lot of additional options, and there is two player variants, two different player variants, in which you can play as one, which is the witch, which includes the... Uh, Let's see here, the, the broomstick one. I've got, I've got the rules here for the advanced play for that one exactly. That's the only one we didn't specifically play. 
It allows for a fifth player alternate sets of cards. Uh, when the magic broom is revealed by any player, the witch then gets to fly around the table and steal two loot cards. These cards may be taken from other players or from the portal pile. For example, she may steal two cards from one player, or one card from one player and one card from the portal, or two from the portal. So it's a steal card, basically. And as the witch, you can utilize that just like you would a potion that starts separate from your deck. Because your deck is literally just your, your hand that you're gonna be holding like this, and you're gonna be flipping cards. One thing with this game, my recommendation is flip cards away from you and place them down by letting them go from your hand before they drop the table. Don't simply grab it, look at it as it's going down. Make sure it's fair for everybody because everybody's going to want to tap that, gr that ground. And if you do something like this where you go down and you, tap, you, you slap it before it even hits the ground because you know that it's going to be a sandwich or a double, you're cheating. And cheating isn't fun in these type of games. And as a kid, I would yell at people whenever they tried to cheat in Egyptian War. Same will be said for this game as well. Now, like I said, though, there's a lot of additional stuff in the game. Add, adding the extra slaps for the portal, adding the steel cards, there's unique different types of treasures that change the game, which is basically just a lot of different face cards that would be added to a basic playing card deck of Egyptian War. And for me, this brings back a ton of nostalgia. I love that game. I really like this game. They both play very, very similarly with some extra stuff. So it's like you're going to get more for more bang for your buck instead of just pulling out a set of playing cards with this game here because it adds extra players and it adds extra rules and variants to play. And of course, the artwork in the game too, which is quite good actually. I really enjoy the artwork in this game. It's very cartoonish, but also very stylish as well. And the fact that you can add modules of play and as you get better at the game, you can choose the different characters to play the game and they definitely do play different when you're playing them so i just had a good time with this one obviously more players is better in this game i would always prefer to play this game with three or more players because that is where the craziness gets in and also there's no you're not always generally just eliminated you can usually come back in the game but you don't want to be slapping when you shouldn't be because it's going to cost you there's penalties for doing so it's a good way for you to lose the game and get get bumped out so just don't don't cheat there's a lot of anti-cheating rules in this game is what I'm saying. So don't cheat. Play fairly. I personally love this game. I think I've already expressed my enjoyment of this game. I think if you've ever played games like that, any of those type of war games, but you want something more, something additional, unique artwork, additional players, and stylization, Wizard Thieves is something you should check out. Yes, definitely check out Wizard Thieves. Especially because you get to be a wizard and a thief. You can be both wizards and thieves. How often have you been a wizard thief? Okay, D&D players, don't tell me. Don't tell me how many times you have, because I know you guys in your multi-classing and all that, but I'm just saying, in a general board game, there's not a lot of options here, okay? And this time you get to be one. All right, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, link in the description, link in the description for Wizard Thieves. I'll talk to you next time, Wizard Thieves.